Hello, I'm not sure anyone's out there yet, but um, I'm just going to get started. Maybe people will join. It's such a beautiful day. I hope a lot of folks are outside enjoying it. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Michelle Madden, uh, and I'm on the instructional staff at the Little Peepers Forest Preschool here in Islip, New York. Uh, we are part of a larger organization called the SeaTuck Environmental Association. Uh, which is located also here in Islip uh, on the south shore of Long Island. We are about midway between Montauk and Manhattan, um, right near the water. It's a beautiful place to live and work. Uh, and I am here uh, to read a story. And we'll see if anyone joins or I'll just be reading to myself, which is absolutely fine. <laughs> Um, today's story is a sweet little story, um, which uh, has a lot of meaning because it's, it's a story that reminds me of the place where Sea uh, Tuck is located and where our, uh, pre, our forest preschool is located, uh, near a pond. Um, and there are all kinds of wonderful creatures and plants, uh, animals and things growing uh, and habitating there at our ponds. And this book, which is called Ducklings and Pollywogs, is really um, a, a wonderful story that makes me feel like I'm, I'm at school, walking near the pond with the kids, um, and observing uh, and taking everything in and coming up with questions and wondering about things. Um, so I thought we'd take a little journey ourselves with this story today. Okay, so again, this is called Ducklings and Pollywogs, and it's by Anne Rockwell and illustrated by Lizzie Rockwell. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me, allergies. <laughs> the wind is kicking up everything up. In winter, lots of people went to the woods to skate on the ice on the pond. But when the ice melted, my father and I went to the pond together. There was just the two of us and all the wild things that grew and lived in the woods. Let's see if you can see what's growing and living there. I'm just going to let you look, see what you can see. Again, this pond and its surroundings look very familiar uh, to our habitat, our natural habitat here on the south shore of Long Island. So let's see what they discover on their journey. Skunk cabbage was the first plant we saw sprouting in the mucky, frosty mud at the edge of the pond. Let's see if any of this looks familiar. This is skunk cabbage. And this is skunk cabbage that has just started to grow and I wonder if anybody knows why it's called skunk cabbage. Uh, you can probably guess from the name but if you ever go onto the trails at um, South Shore Nature Center and you walk on the boardwalk you will see the skunk cabbage doesn't look like this anymore. That's what it looks like in winter. It's big, beautiful, huge green leaves that's very low on the ground, like a ground cover. But if you broke off just a piece and took a sniff, you'd know why it's called skunk cabbage. I think that says it all. But it is a beautiful plant um, and it's gorgeous and it serves as a main food source for one of our favorite creatures that live near uh, at South Shore Center, 
uh, which are snapping turtles. Snapping turtles love skunk cabbage. Uh, and they've got a lot of it to choose from at the nature center. Okay, so let's continue with our journey here. Soon, the bottom of the pond thawed in the warm spring sun. Then, big bullfrog pollywogs swam up from the mud. See that? So there's something interesting to note, that in winter, most of our friends who live in the pond, frogs, toads, turtles, they all sleep and dig themselves into the mud to keep warm in winter. Now, here's another question for you. Pollywogs. Does anybody know what a pollywog is? It's a, not a name you hear all that often. There's another name you might hear more frequently. This is called a tadpole. So pollywogs and tadpoles are basically the baby or the larva form of frogs and toads. Um, these guys are a little more uh, growing out of the larval stage. Not so much little eggs and babies anymore. Um, they've started to form tails and even some of them little legs in the back. That's the first thing to form, which is wonderful to see if you ever catch a pollywog and plan on putting it right back in the water. Okay, so lots happening here in the spring. Soon, more frogs laid more eggs. Salamanders did too. The eggs looked like balls of jelly. There were black specks inside the frog and salamander eggs. These were tiny pollywogs that would soon hatch out and wiggle around the pond. I saw a black and shiny salamander with yellow spots swimming in the pond. It looked like a little sea monster. Look at that. So she got down on the edge and she's looking in close. And you can see those eggs big egg mass and they do they look like pieces of big jelly nests um, clear blobs with little black specks and those little black specks are usually frogs or toads the eggs and as you can see there's a frog or a toad swimming and then a this is a spotted salamander I believe and we've had we have those here we also have red-backed salamanders now these two creatures are called amphibians and I wonder if people know what an amphibian is. Really cool. Amphibians are creatures that have very thin, thin skin. If you've ever seen a salamander or a frog, you can see their skin is very wrinkly and it's, it's very, it's, you can almost see their insides, hearts beating, stomachs. And that is because they have to have water or a moist environment to live in because that's how they get air. They breathe through their skin. Like the salamander has no lungs. So they have to use their skin to breathe and absorb the moisture. So kind of cool. Tiny green duckweeds grew on the surface of the pond. Duckweed, hmm. Frogs sang, Kablonk. Each frog tried to sing louder than the others. I thought that was funny. My dad did too. There they are. Now here is the duckweed. That's duckweed. And that is tiny, tiny, pretty little, looks almost like green clovers, but very small. And it sits on top of the pond uh, and ducks love to eat it. Um, but if you go and visit a pond, you can come here to South Shore because you'll find all of these things. You will see very clearly the duckweed all over.
the mallard duck and her drake went quack quack as they swam around and around the pond together. Soon, tall swamp irises grew at the edge of the pond in the woods. So these beautiful, tall yellow flowers are swamp irises. They require very moist conditions to grow. Um, we have lots of these over at uh, Seatuck's headquarters in Islip. Uh, if you go into the front driveway, you will see a pond in front of the house uh, where we have thousands and thousands of these growing. And they take over. Uh, they're what's called invasive, as pretty as they are. Um, they are uh, not native to this area, so they can actually take away um, some important um, nutrients and things from native plants. Um, so it's tricky. They're beautiful, certainly, but they don't always do good for us here. Now the ducks. Here is a mallard, and here is a drake. I don't know if anybody knows what a mallard is or a drake. They certainly look different. The mallard is the female duck. And she's just very kind of simple looking, pretty but simple, brown, brown spots. The drake is the male, or the boy duck, and he is colorful, very colorful and pretty to watch. One of the reasons that female or girl ducks are not quite as colorful and interesting to look at is because when the female ducks have eggs or babies, they need to sit on the nest uh, to take care of the eggs until they hatch and then also make sure they protect their babies. So when you're very simple looking like that, you kind of blend in to a nest, which might be the same color. And there's a word for that. I don't know if anybody knows what that word is, to blend in to what's around you so that you're safe. That is called camouflage. And so the male ducks, the boy ducks, are much more colorful and showy um, because they are interested in attracting females um, so that they can uh, couple up and create new babies, new ducks. So there they are, swimming together in the pond. And we actually have uh, a drake and a mallard that lives in the pond at the South Shore Nature Center. Look, my father said. I looked through his binoculars and saw three eggs on the little island in the middle of the pond. The mallard drop duck and her drake were watching over them. Are those eggs going to hatch into ducklings, sir? I asked. My father nodded his head and smiled. So there you go, look at that. And there's the mom, the mallard, watching our eggs, getting ready to probably sit and keep them warm. And there's the drake, the dad. <clears throat> now primroses grew by the edge of the brook that flowed into the pond. A swallowtail butterfly fluttered in the sunshine and sipped nectar from the primrose blossoms. There's lots going on at this pond. And so I don't know if that's a big word for what's going on there, but butterflies like bees are pollinators. One day, the duck eggs hatched. 
We could hear the ducklings if we sat very, very quietly. Even the big bullfrogs were quiet while the three little ducklings went in downy soft voices. Quack, quack, said the duck and her drake. There they are. Where's the ducklings? Hatched safely and soundly. And the frog keeping careful watch. When summer came, water lilies made green circles of leaves on the still surface of the pond. Blue and red dragonflies darted in the sunshine. Big-eyed frogs peeked up between the water lilies. They hung quietly in the water, looking and looking, just like my father and me. So here we go. We talked about duckweed, which was tiny little leaves on the surface of the pond, and these are lilies, or some people call them lily pads, I'm sure you've heard, and our frog friends here like to use them as cover, um, also like to sit in sun on them. And the dragonflies. Ponds are really cool. There's so much that goes on. So amazing. Another creature. A painted turtle sat on a log that floated in the pond. A little, shiny a little shiny sunfish swam in circles under the log. That. I wonder if you've ever seen a turtle like that. You see painted turtles or box turtles. You see a lot of box turtles here. They love to crawl up on logs and sun themselves and warm up. Another creature that we see often that loves to sun itself, a garter snake took a sun bath on the rocks near the place where the cattails grew. And these are cattails, if you've never seen cattails before. Right here, I got pointed them. Not, not a great picture of them, but they are called cattails for a reason. You could probably figure out there's actually usually longer pieces that go up a little higher and then they get much taller. But they certainly look like long kind of tubular cattails. One day the mallard duck and her drake and their three ducklings swam around and around the pond. Quack quack, the big duck said and the duckling said quack quack too. We're getting older and no more cheep cheep. When autumn came, the leaves on the trees turned red and brown and gold. Acorns and beech nuts plopped into the pond. I don't know if you know acorns and beech nuts. Those are the nuts we find all over trees here and often on the ground. You can see they're very tiny, but they're there on the tree. Cold air made the swamp irises bend over and die. The frogs stopped singing, blonk, blonk. The ducklings grew up. They flew away with the duck and her drake to a warm place for the winter. Look at this. These ducks have grown. The babies, one, two, oops, three. And there's the mom. I'm sorry, that's the dad, and here's the mom, over here. They grow very quickly. Leaves fell off the trees and into the pond. Frogs and tadpoles, salamanders, turtles, and fish swam down and hid in the mud for their long winter sleep. The water lilies died in the water. 
Only a few brown leaves floated on the still surface of the pond. White snowflakes began to fall. Winter had come. So everything's going away to stay warm and protected during the cold winter months. When the pond was frozen solid and the woods were white with snow, lots of people came again. They skated on the ice that covered the pond, and so did my father and I. So we're right back to where they started at the beginning of the story. Back to a frozen pond where there seems to be more people than creatures. That is the tale of ducklings and pollywogs. So I encourage everyone, if you can, uh, even if you don't live on Long Island, to get out and find freshwater ponds somewhere uh, where you can go and take a look, spend the day, look around, walk around, see what you can see, try and sit still, because if you're still, sometimes you will see movement in the pond. And you might be surprised at what might come out. So, again, my name is Michelle Madden. I'm on the instructional staff here uh, at SeaTuck Environmental Association's Little Peepers Forest School in Islip, Long Island. Uh, and uh, that is my story for the day. Uh, don't forget to tune in on Thursday at 2.30 uh, where my friend and colleague, Miss Mary Miller, will be reading another story for you. Uh, and next week I'll be back again on Tuesday uh, for what I believe is going to be the last uh, live reading, um, at least uh, for this, this month and this year. Um, perhaps we'll bring it back, which would be fun uh, in the fall sometime. Okay, everyone, have a lovely day. Bye.